So hello and welcome back to Onyx's Trading Corner. Um, Manny and I are back this week. A lot seems to be going on in markets. We've got OPEC kind of saying they're going to unwind cuts. Libya's kicking off. Yeah. Margins continue to spiral into oblivion. I, I don't know. What are you seeing on the uh, in terms of crude and Brent flows? Yeah, a lot has happened. Um, well, the strength in data had continued. Um, we said last time, let's wait for it to kind of the ball play to finish up. Um, so we're kind of seeing the tail end of that now, I think. Um, we just had expiry on Friday. Um, so we've come in Monday. And interestingly, actually, typically we tend to see a kind of roll up trade, especially when we have a strong backwardated market, which is exactly what we had last week. Um, so the day after expiry, we tend to see a bit of a rally on flat price, which has gone amiss today. I mm. mean, I don't know, is it down to it being Labor Day and the US are out? Um, or is it the first sign of, you know, a weakening market? Well, is the bull play done? Is it, That's, what do we think? Yeah, that is the question. I think typically what we tend to see is at the start of every month, the market likes to reset. Um, so we're waiting for the first window now. We've got a couple of hours to go, but yeah, it will definitely be the first sign. You know, if we start to see some physical barrels coming out into the window, me personally, I'm looking for TI especially. We've got really high physical premium. Yep. Um, so expecting things to begin to land in Europe. Yep. Um, but the curve is definitely suggesting we're going to get it at some point this week. To your point about holidays, weird weird moves, big moves tend to happen on holidays. Yep. Like last Monday was, Monday before Labor Day was bank holiday here in the UK. Had that massive crazy rally followed by a big sell-off. Today, where you know things look kind of weak, even though they aren't yeah. moving much with the U.S. out. But it's interesting you mentioned diffs coming off. I've been looking a lot at product diffs. One of the things that I like to sort of monitor as a way to get kind of forward beat on what margins are going to do is distillate cash in Asia. Mm. You know, people have been talking about China weakness, macroeconomic malaise out there, and you see it in the distillate diffs in the cash. It's it's been weak, trending lower. Um, <clears throat> do you weak margins are going to weigh on your market, aren't they? Yeah, well, this is the problem. I mean, as you as you said, last bank holiday, we had, you know, all the focus was on Libya. Um, but in the background, we have a lot of the products really starting to weaken. So yeah. gasoline in particular, I think a lot of the market is now starting to roll a lot of their lengths back into Cal 25 because, you know, the summer didn't play out yeah. um, as we expected. And so they're looking for the next kind of strength to appear on the curve and it's not looking like it's going to be in q4 that's right um distillates aren't doing particularly well i think diesel gave up a lot and it's not looking like it's really going to come back in into the rest of the year especially um you know after the summer summer's done you know first of september we can officially say the summer's done um, it's over. <laughs> so it's just really crude um now crude has climbed up a lot we've got diffs of over two dollars the Libya outage, I mean, let me know what you think on, on the wider, like, kind of macro, obviously. But the swaps market, it was just, you know, it's an excuse to keep the strength in the front of the curve, which is exactly what happened. Um, but into Q4, you know, we, we're starting to look at back end September, October, so October barrels especially, it's not looking too, too healthy. I agree with you. I'm still bearish the, the spreads and flat price. Um, I do think... You know, it's interesting, maybe Goldman Sachs was watching our trading corner last week, but they've shifted their range down to sort of 70 bit at 85 in yeah. Brent, which is exactly what we were talking mm. about. And it's a big thing for them to call bearish, right? Yeah, they're, I mean, I guess Jeff Curry's gone, but they used to be the perma bulls. Yeah. Um, needless to say, uh, I agree. I think, we're, I think we're headed lower. We're sort of in the middle of that range right now. I think we're going to test the low end of that range. And the reason why is, you know, yes, Libya went out. That's 600,000 barrels a day in the east. Um, it doesn't seem to be coming back anytime soon. It, it could be out, you know, we, we've seen these outages last for months or even even longer uh, at, at one point in the past in my career. So, you know, there's not really much hope that it's going to, you know, suddenly flood the market in the, in the immediate term. But I don't think that matters, right? Yeah. OPEC has already signaled that they're going to start unwinding their cuts. Is there, this is probably one of the factors that goes into their decision to ease up a little bit. If the market were still super loose and there was plenty of Libyan around, maybe they'd have been slower to do it. But, <clears throat> you know, they've got 2.2 million barrels a day of voluntary cuts that they're going to unwind over the course of a year. That's just shy of 200,000 barrels per month that they're going to bring back. 
that's meaningful. And I think yeah. that that really impacts sentiment. So, you And you've know, got to also look at seasonality as well, right? Yeah. I mean, we're coming into turnarounds again, you know, Q4 around late October, November, we're going to get run cuts. Yeah. Um, so if, we, if you're looking at the crude space, yeah, OK, Libya, uh, you know, out potentially what, around a million barrels a day, let's say. But the state of the margins right now, we should expect around a million barrels a day of run cuts um, as the margin becomes less profitable. Yeah. So we're going to see that into Q4. And then additionally turnarounds, I mean, that could be anywhere from one and a half to three million barrels a day. So really, the run cuts are overwhelming what's going on with Libya. Yeah. Um, so it's just whether we'll start to see it play out in the data structure yet. Yeah, I think, uh, I mean, it's obviously like we talked about last week, it's hard to be bearish in prompt Brent. Yeah. That's a market that tends to rally for obvious mm. reasons. But well, you get caught out the yeah, most. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But I do think, you know, to the extent that there may or may not be a pretty strong dated play going on right now, as soon as it ends, I think I think it's just going to be a one-way train lower. Yeah. And you're, you're supposed to... I think the price action last week was really sort of revealing where when there wasn't a lot of physical and financial capital to deploy on a UK holiday on Monday, mm. the market just gassed higher and then all week you saw physical mm. and sort of yeah. derivatives offered into it. So I think that that sort of weight is just going to continue to push the market down. That said, OPEC is still cutting an enormous amount of oil. Libya is out. I don't think we can just fall out of bed to the mm. downside. I think it's going to be just good risk reward to the downside, kind of a grind and yeah. maybe th- punctuated by some SPR buying on the way down. Yeah, I think you're right. It will, like, we'll need real physical signals here yeah. um, for the market to pick up some kind of momentum. I think, you know, this year especially, we've had a lot of stop outs, both sides, as we, yeah. as we said last time. And what that's done to the market state has made it a little bit more cautious. Um, but people don't want to jump on the bandwagon yeah. straight away until everything is aligned. But we've got to look at the product cracks to give us some kind of, you know, indication. And right now the signaling in product cracks is they're going to keep selling off. Yeah. It's it's crazy. Like, you know, to your point about a lot of stop outs this year, one thing that I like to look at in crude is just sum up the net managed money net spec length for Brent and TI. I sort of add them together now because it's just one big system. Yeah. Uh, not like it used to be. But but anyway, that that net spec length is kind of near all time lows. <clears throat> Which I okay. find super interesting because, you know, that's probably the single most important thing for me in terms of determining whether the market can really go or not. Mm-hmm. And if everybody's bearish, again, it's going to be hard for the market to just kind of careen lower. Yeah. There are going to be plenty of people taking profit all the way down. So that is yeah. the other problem, you know, slowly the, the wider market, people like Goldman Sachs, looking at the fish shops, <laughs> etc. the more they start singing to a bearish tune. Yeah. Kind of the less likely it's actually going to end up fulfilling itself. That's um, true. But let's see. I mean, for me personally, I think we need to keep an eye on these product cracks. Yeah. Typically, yeah. we don't see an instance where both gasoline and diesel both come off at the same time yeah. and crude rallies. I mean, the margin has just got absolutely annihilated. Um, it's hard for spreads to perform when margins get annihilated. Yeah. It really is. So really, what should we see here? We, sh- we need to see either a crude correction which means dated needs to come off. We yeah. might see that in the form of <clears throat> TI barrels coming over, um, or the product cracks need to start strengthening to help balance out the margin. But either way, something on the curve needs to move, right? I recently read, you know, we don't have tanks at Cushing, we're not experts on that, but I, I read that uh, sweet crude is looking pretty tight at Cushing. So mm. let's say that the flood of sort of incremental exports doesn't come from the US above baseline. And let's say that product cracks continue to weaken. What, what gives? What happens in your market? What if neither of those two things plays out? Well, we still have, um, you know, the European margins. Yeah. So it's not as though we need TI to start landing locally to start pressuring the data spread margin. It could be 40s. You know, no one wants this sour crude because, I don't know, maybe the Asia knock-on effects are, are filtering down into Europe. But either yeah. way, you know, data is priced of off the cheapest barrel. It doesn't matter if it's TI, it doesn't matter if it's Echo Fisk or, or 40s. It's just a barrel of crude, yeah. which always means that when we're selling off, because you only need one barrel to price out that dated, the sell-off can be very quick, yeah. extremely quick. A lot, um, a lot easier than it is to get all the 
bow is priced out higher. Well, for your sake and mine, let's hope it happens really quick, just yeah. like you said. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, all these people who have stopped out of their various trades on the, the highs and lows of this otherwise fairly uninteresting range this year, you know, to your point about gasoline, they are sort of, I'm seeing them as well in my market, sort of rolling them out to, uh, to yeah. next year, yeah, selling exactly. spreads. Yeah, so I think, um, <clears throat> I mean, pushing, our side- Pushing talking, risk out, yeah. Exactly, talking to the gasoline guys, they're thinking Octec. Mm -hmm. um, EBOB short is probably the highest risk reward at the minute. Um, and I think, you know, as I said, it was because the summer didn't really become that fruitful, but also I think the market is expecting Q1 to perform a little better than Q4. So generally, you know, even for me, actually, crude kind of Q4, Q1 shorts seem to make the most sense there. Interesting. Yeah, I agree. I, I completely agree with that, actually. And yeah, just on a, a final note, volatility um, mm. for what little it's worth. The options market is pricing, you know, the implied volatility market is pricing that sort of crude is expected to move about a dollar thirty per day in flat price. Okay. And it's moving about a dollar thirty per day. The options markets are really well in line with realized volatility, and realized volatility is really low. So these are like little minutia that we have to focus on. But zooming yeah. way out, I think it would be hard for, you know, your macro funds, your situational. Uh, equity funds to sort of get involved in our market mm. right now. This is. Do you a, think the vol is going to pick up? Or? <clears throat> no. 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 Okay. I think there's too much uh, slack in the system. Yeah. Too much spare capacity buffering things to the upside. Mm. And, and not enough positioning, probably, right? Yeah. To the downside, positioning will damper any big dampen any yeah. big moves, and we're about to start a rate cutting cycle. So that should provide just a tailwind of dollars coming into anything. And crude is backwardated, right? So mm. investors do like to go buy deferred crude and roll it up to earn that roll yield. Um, deferred crude, meaning like month two or month three, right? Nothing crazy. Yeah. So, okay. so yeah, there's, there's kind of flex on both sides of the equation. Yeah. And I think we have to be, well, you know, I'm bearish and I'm excited to be bearish, you know, have to remember not to get over my skis, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Okay. So let's see. We'll pick up in another week or so. Let's see if we're lower.